In verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. So he is he's speaking to his disciples. He's sending them out right now to go and preach the gospel. Uh, but he's also starting to cross over into the future. He's actually speaking about the future and future believers, the church, the early church. Um, I believe these they're included in what he's saying here because he's starting to talk about they're going to be dragged before synagogues. And, but I'm going to use you to be a witness to the Gentiles. And all of that wasn't fulfilled with his disciples going out right now. This kind of thing is actually warning for the future. And he's saying, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. You know, not everyone's going to receive your message. But just stay innocent. Just be a sheep. You don't have to resort to deceptive means. Just trust God. Follow the shepherd. Be a sheep. Be wise. Don't be an idiot. Don't be a fool. Be wise as a serpent. But just beware of people. Because they that not everyone's going to accept your message. And they're going to be vicious. And they're trying to, going to try to kill you. And some of you are going to get dragged before synagogues and governors and kings. And, and for my name's sake. Verse 19. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And that's just a wonderful message to them of assurance and comfort. You don't have to worry. Trust in God. Don't rely on your own strength, but the Spirit of God will speak through you. God has not abandoned you. Father, He's with you. His Spirit is on you. And uh, just lean into Him. Trust in Him. And He will speak through you. And how to answer. Verse 21. Brother will deliver brother over to death. And Father... His children and children will rise against parents and have them put to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And so obviously it's talking about in the context where you believe in the gospel, you've received Jesus, you're following after Jesus and you're going out and you're preaching the gospel. There's going to be people that hate you and you might be in a religious family and you receive Jesus and your whole family, they still believe in the law and the going to synagogue and observing all the practices and the religious practices. And But then all of a sudden, you're someone who believes in Jesus. You're following after Jesus. And families will turn against each other on this basis because this is a huge big issue of law and grace, of works and faith. And there is people in, in works and legalism and religious that are like wolves that hate um, grace and they hate Christ. It's an anti-Christ spirit. It's a faith-hating spirit. It's a grace-hating spirit. And those people exist. They existed in Jesus' day. They existed in the early church days. And they exist today. And the devil is behind it. And there's people that just, they hate Christ. They hate grace. They hate faith. And they want to attack it and destroy it and kill it. And if you as a Christian, you as a Christ follower, you say you're a Christian, they will just hate you. And even in families, you become a Christian. Certain families will turn on you and hate you. Or the parents become Christian and the children will betray their parents. And then Jesus says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And a lot of people twist the scripture and threaten believers and say, you know, if you don't keep the faith and believe to the end, you'll... You, you could be lost, lose your salvation. And I don't believe that that's what Jesus was saying. I believe he is just showing the contrast between a true believer and a false believer. A true convert and a false convert. And it's the issue of the stony ground hearer. You know the parable he told about the, the farmer. He sowed the seed and some seed landed on the stony grounds. And because of the stones, it could not put down its root. But it shot up quickly. But then when the sun came... It shriveled up and died. And, and, and Jesus said that those are like people who receive the word with joy at first, but they have no root. And when the sun comes, which is persecution for the word's sake, they have no root. They just shrivel up and die. And I believe it's actually people that never had faith in the first place. 
they didn't actually believe in the first place they just they heard the word they yeah I, I accept that but it actually didn't produce faith it didn't produce true spiritual life on the inside of them and so when they faced persecution they just abandon the word. So it's not referring to people who were born again and saved and then they were persecuted and they shriveled up. It's talking about false converts who get all excited about the gospel, the word, but they don't actually really believe. So when they persecuted, they abandon it really quickly. And that's the context that Jesus is talking into. He's just listed all the different kinds of persecution that you'll face for his sake, for believing the word, believing the gospel. Families will turn on you. You'll be dragged before synagogues, governors, you know, people will hate you. And that's persecution. That's the sun shining on the plant. And uh, if you're not a true believer, you won't endure that persecution. You'll just shrivel up and die. You'll abandon Christ. You'll, but, but he say, but those that are true born again believers, you'll be able to walk through this persecution. You, you'll have roots that go down deep because you have faith in Christ. You believe in Christ. And yes, you'll face persecution, but you'll be able to endure that and you don't have to worry about that. So that's the context Jesus was referring to there. I don't believe we can use the scripture and say, you know, unless you endure to the end and don't ever deny Christ, like, and if you do, that's it, you're lost forever. Now, I do believe that if someone is truly born again, they will be able to endure through all those things, through difficulty, through tragedy, through hardship, through lies and, and deception coming at them. Um, but not everyone is solid and strong. Sometimes the environment that people's in is a really challenging environment and perhaps they're not mature enough in Christ to be able to handle Maybe they're all alone in their faith and there's too much influence around them that just um, deceives them and leads them off. But if they had faith in Christ, if they believed in Jesus and were truly born again, I believe even if they got caught you know, in some stuff, I believe, personally believe they are saved. Verse 23 when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. So what does that mean? There's a lot of people that speculate what that means and try to put it into a timeline. I, I don't think it's so much speaking about a timeline. I think it's just talking about it's comfort Jesus is giving his disciples. Hey, you go out and preach the gospel and don't worry, I am with you. The Son of Man is with you. The Son of Man is, is coming. And, uh, you know, th there is coming a time when I'm going to return. I'm going to hold everyone a, 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 to account. And people may have judged you, persecuted you, killed you. But uh, everyone's going to stand before me. And don't, don't fear people and what they can do to you. Just go and, and preach this gospel. It's a promise. I'm, I'm sending you out, but I'm with you. And you're not going to even get through all these towns without me coming and, and being with you. And also, I, I believe it's a reference to just after the cross, when the Son of Man, when Jesus is resurrected and he comes in his glory into his kingdom, I believe it could be referring to the end of the age. You know, this gospel of the kingdom will go out to all nations and then the end will come. Then Christ will return. So it, it really can refer to all those time periods. But I believe ultimately, that it is an encouragement saying, I'm not sending you out alone. I am with you. I am coming. Don't be afraid of whatever people do to you. Know that I am with you. Amen. Verse 24. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? Basically saying that they persecute me, you're my people, you're my students, I'm your teacher, and don't think that you're above persecution. If you follow me, um, they're going to persecute you as well. So you're no different to me. All right? and, and basically just warning them, saying be prepared for it. Don't, don't be idealistic and think you're going to go out there and it's going to be a walk in the park. You need to be ready. They, you can see they're persecuting me. You can see they, they, I'm, I'm doing these mighty, amazing miracles. And they're saying it's from the devil. They're saying I'm from the devil. They're saying it's from Beelzebub. And it's like, you go out there. Don't be idealistic and naive. You might be doing these amazing miracles. And you expect everyone to just love it and love Jesus. But don't be a fool. There's people that are going to hate you because of it. If they hated me for doing what I do, they're going to hate you as well. Don't think that you're above me and that it's not going to affect you. It is. 
Verse 26. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. And I believe this, this right there, that statement is the very heart of what Jesus is trying to communicate to them. Have no fear of them. So you're going to go out and you're going to preach. People are going to be against you, the wolves. But don't be afraid. And that's, that's the point. Don't be afraid. Don't be unaware. There's, you're going you're to be persecuted, but don't be afraid. Know this. There's nothing that is covered that is not going to be revealed. You know, everything is going to come out on the day of judgment. And if people hurt you, kill you, and think they got away with it, don't worry. One day they will stand before me and give an account and justice will be served. Judgment will come on them. So don't you worry about that. You just go and preach the gospel. Don't be afraid. Preach the gospel. It is very important. Don't let anything intimidate you or stop you. Go and preach this gospel. Go and preach the gospel of the kingdom with signs and wonders because people need to repent. They need a savior. And the devil is trying to stop people from hearing the gospel and he's doing his best. He hates you. He's anti-Christ. He wants to stop Christ. He wants to stop his disciples. But you know what? Don't be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of people. Just go in my boldness, go in my authority and preach the gospel. Jesus said that to his disciples and he's saying it to us today as well. Verse 27, what I tell you in the dark, say in the light and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetop and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. And so right there, he's basically saying, go out and preach. Don't be afraid. What I've told you, the things you've heard me say, go and proclaim them loudly to the world. And this is the whole thing of let your light shine. Don't be afraid of people. Don't be intimidated. Don't be silenced. Just go and let your light shine. The, the, the Pharisees, the legalists, the scribes, they will try and shut you down. They will accuse you of all things. They will kill some of you. Don't let that stop you. Don't abandon Christ because of that. No, endure through all of that stuff because I am with you. I'm going to hold them to account. I'm going to judge them. Don't be afraid of people. Be afraid of God. Okay, and, and, and he wasn't saying to his disciples, you know, be afraid of God. He was, he was it, again, it was a comfort. He was saying, don't be afraid of, of people and what they can do to you, but, but know that God is going to judge those people. He's, God is the one. Rather follow God, not people. Rather be afraid of God than of people. Rather have a reverence and an awe for God than fear of, of people. That's, that's what he's saying. Um, you just preach the gospel and let God worry about those people. Even if they hurt you, God will, God will take care of them. And that's, that's, a, that's a great comfort. He's saying, you're not alone. I'm with you. Uh, and, and also, a number of times already, Jesus has spoken about hell, casting people into outer darkness. Um, and some people say Jesus never spoke about that. And the, uh, he did. <laughs> it's all in the Bible. And then verse 29, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Um, and so again, he's just, it's comfort. He's giving them comfort. He's saying, God has not abandoned you. He hasn't forgotten about you. God cares about you. Look at how he cares about the sparrows, the birds. He takes care of them. God's going to take care of you. So don't fear. Don't worry. Don't hold back. Just go and preach the gospel. This, this is like, he's an amazing coach. He's an amazing leader, inspiring his followers to, to, to not be cowardly, to not be fearful, but to be brave, to be bold, to go out like champions into a world that's full of people that are going to hate them. And, and, he, and they there to tell them the message of God's salvation and that they need to stop going their own way and they need to repent and turn to God. Stop trusting in themselves and their own works. Repent and put their faith in Christ because only he can save them and not to be afraid of anyone but be afraid of God. He can cast people into hell and there is coming a day where, he's, where everyone is going to stand before him and give an account and he's going to judge each person and 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 Jesus is saying, go out. You're going out with the message of the gospel 
of salvation to the lost, to the masses. And if they would receive it, then they have no fear when they stand before God one day. They are saved. And so here he's just he's giving great comfort to them, saying, don't worry, God is with you. He's going to look after you. Verse 32. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. And so this isn't Jesus saying to Christians, like, be careful that you don't ever deny Christ. If you just deny Christ once, that's it. You're going to be lost. Jesus is going to disown you. That's, that's absolutely not what he's saying in this context. He's talking about those who receive the gospel and who don't receive the gospel. And it's very clear the context in Israel was there were people that were acknowledging that Christ was the Messiah, that he was the son of David. He was the fulfillment of prophecy. He was the deliverer, the savior. He had come to save Israel. He was the one who John had spoken about, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. There were many people who were acknowledging Jesus and accepting him and believing in him. And then there were many who were rejecting him, not acknowledging that he was the Messiah. And those were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the teachers of the law, the religious um, who rejected Jesus, who denied Jesus. And, and Jesus is simply saying, those who acknowledge me before God, God will acknowledge them because they're the ones who have faith in Jesus. They receive Jesus. But the ones who don't acknowledge and who deny him, they're the ones who don't have faith, the religious people. And, God, and, and, see, and they think that God, um, they think that they saved and they think that God is, is accepting them, but actually they're deceived and they're wrong and they lost. God is actually going to deny them. Jesus is going to deny them in heaven when they stand before God one day.